Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Training Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures. I've been riding and guiding motorcycle trips around the world and here in Oregon for over 10 years now. Today's video, we're going to show you how to bounce your bike so that nothing gets in your way. So whether you're riding pavement only or if you're out on adventure riding in dirt and things like this, there are obstacles, two by fours, logs, rocks and things like that, that you might come across. And it's a real great technique to know how to bounce your suspension at the last second to help yourself kind of float up over these objects. It can save you from having rim damage, uh, pinch flats, from going over the handlebars if the object is too big. So there's a few more things though that go into just bouncing your, your bike like that. There's other points to consider. Let's get into those right now. So again, you could be coming around a turn at some point and find a board in the road, a rock. Uh, we, we travel parts of the world where cattle guards are out there and the gravel leading up to the metal grate of the cattle guard can be quite a steel ledge there. And instead of smacking your rim right into that, it's so much better if you can kind of bounce and float over that. This example we have here is certainly not the biggest log. There are better riders doing more complicated things on YouTube. We're not trying to defeat the obstacles that you guys are climbing. So I don't know in the comments section, there's gonna be plenty of jokes about how my man parts are so much smaller than yours because you're a better rider and yada, yada, yada. This is just a small example. We're gonna talk through the factors and the things to consider before tackling something like this, because if done incorrectly, you could end up with that pinch flat or that front dented wheel, or just going over the handlebars. Ooh. <laughs> so one of the first things I can suggest is, is, unless it's a bike you're already familiar with, if for example, you're coming to rent one of our bikes or you're borrowing somebody else's, get to know the bike in terms of actually how the suspension works with your weight on it and your luggage or your backpack or whatever you're wearing. How does that suspension bounce? Get to know how it feels. And that'll change a little bit. Fork oil in the morning is gonna be colder and stiffer into a warm afternoon. It can have some differences, but if you spend a little time bouncing just before you ride or every once in a while, it'll give you a feel for how that suspension is gonna to react to your weight compressing it. And then of course the bike itself, you know, is it even the kind of bike in the first place that you would see an obstacle like this log and actually take it? Do you have the type of suspension travel and ground clearance that would really be required, so to speak, to make it over. Is the engine protected with a skid plate like this? Another important point would be the ratio of the size of the object itself to the wheel that you're gonna go over. This is a 21 inch front on the KTM, but if you have a 19 inch front wheel or a 17, again, changing that ratio, making the object larger in relation to the size of the wheel, um, ultimately something out of your control, but a factor in deciding whether you should go over this in the first place. So from a body position perspective, obviously this is something where you need to be in a standing position. If you're gonna thrust your weight down into the foot pegs and bounce the suspension downward, you need to start from a standing position. Shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully you've practiced that plenty in more normal situations before doing this. And your timing and the speed that you're moving is absolutely crucial here. Now there's multiple factors that go into the timing and getting this right. So as you're approaching the object that you intend to sort of bounce and float over, you have to think about what traction is available for you. Okay, so here we are on loose gravel and dirt, and you'll see in the videos that when I'm in this spot here, trying to bounce and lift the front end up with the throttle, the wheel is really just spinning. I'm getting, not, getting very little traction here, and so I'm not getting a lot of lift like you would see if I was on stuck pavement or something a little bit more grippy for the rear tire. And so the availability of traction to you is one factor, but also does your bike have traction control? Did you remember to turn it off? The KTM seems to always be turning it back on whether I turn it off or not. So that's a very important point. If you're gonna be laying on the throttle to try and pick up that front end, better not have your traction control on because again, it could limit your ability to lift the bike up. Perhaps consider what gear you're gonna be in, right? You don't want too low of an RPM so that you can't really get proper power into the ground. You don't want too high of an RPM so that you're gonna kind of top it out before you go. Are you gonna just throttle? Are you just gonna pin it? Or are you gonna do a little bit of a throttle and a clutch situation? A lot of different factors and things to consider and visualize before you get into this. 
in some of the footage we're showing, you'll see that I'm actually coming down at the time that my front wheel hits the log. So a mistimed situation here. Part of that is because of the variable traction. I never know for sure when I'm gonna pop that throttle and hit the gas, am I gonna actually accelerate or not in a no traction or almost no traction situation like this, then I'm not actually accelerating like I think I might accelerate and instead I'm bouncing too early and already coming down on the log. So again, a lot of variables here, the timing involved and the amount of traction you're gonna get out of the situation. And so it's gonna take some time and practice. And another important point to consider in this approach zone is how soft is the terrain. Again, that's not only a factor of your traction that's available, but is the bike itself actually gonna sink down a little bit more now that you're thrusting your weight down into it. So there's a lot going on here and I don't have the answer for you as to what your next situation is gonna require. But again, helping you think through the different factors involved here, I think you can come up with the best solution with some time and practice. As you're going up though, as you feel the bike bouncing upward for that split second, I like the idea of gripping it, grip the bike between my knees, between my shins, and sort of try and lift it up with me. Maybe a little bit of a lift on the handlebars, but also keeping in mind that you're throttling and you're, you know, every time you pull up on the handlebars, you're essentially pulling your upper body down towards the bike. And so there's sort of a whole range of motions going on here to consider. But you're gonna try and lift the bike up with you and in firmer ground scenarios, like on pavement or on really hard packed gravel, I've been quite successful in being able to like literally clear some objects by bouncing enough over it and lifting everything up, you can do it. And again, not in this situation, we could go find another filming location with better traction and a different scenario. Um, even though I'm losing traction, it doesn't look like I'm lifting the front wheel up, I am putting myself in a better situation by having some power into the rear wheel, some rise in the front wheel, and in, as opposed to going just say, no throttle straight into this log, that would be a different situation. There would be the potential to stick the front end or dent the front wheel or blow out the fork seals or end up with a pinch flat or something like that. But, and again, while it doesn't look like the front end in these videos is lifting very much, it is essentially, it's better than having neutral positioning and a neutral lateral movement like that. There is power lifting the front end just a little bit. But again, just powering through it, I think is probably your best option. Stay on that power to again, wait for that rear wheel to hit the log then, and hopefully not buck you in the butt so much with the seat popping up like that, but to hopefully keep a little bit of lift in the front end and not have the rear coming up so fast at you. Over the years, my ass has taken a pounding. And think about your landing zone too, or your follow through point, you know, before you've decided to tackle an obstacle like this, consider what is behind you because if you're throttling into the situation, well, you're speeding up in essence and what's gonna be ahead if you need to stop quickly. This is obviously something you would try and do in a more controlled setting, like start in a scenario where you've got real traction. You could do it on pavement with a simple two by four. Start small, learn the physics, feel the athleticism that it takes to flow with this and feel yourself bouncing up over and just grazing over objects. Start small before you move on to bigger things uh, like this. So again, perhaps the definition of adventure riding is that you're gonna have a lot of variety and things that you're gonna come across. And nothing says you have to ride or bounce over them, you know. Maybe you have a chainsaw available. Maybe you can just move the object out of the way. Maybe uh, going around it, whatever the case is. Before you get into it too far though, make sure you're practicing these things. Start small and work your way up until the confidence is there and you can just glide over them with ease. So thanks for watching everyone. If there's more that you wanna learn about, make sure to make comments down in the description area below. Like and subscribe and hit the notifications button so you see when we have more videos coming. We're here doing this, trying to help you become a better rider so you can see more of this beautiful world. Thanks for watching, we'll see you out there.